What's going on guys, welcome to another episode of Demsec. And in this video we're going to be looking at three of our favourite DNS tools. So I'm going to be covering uh, DNS to proxy, which is essentially, as the name says, it's just a proxy for all of the DNS queries to go through. And I'm going to be covering DNS steel and iodine. DNS steel is really cool because it allows you to exfiltrate data using DNS packets. So if from a blue team's perspective, it's pretty difficult to see all your files being ripped out of the network. And of course, iodine, I covered a few years back, and iodine's a way to tr tunnel your traffic over DNS. And this is really useful if you're on a network that only allows DNS traffic out, such as like a captive port or, or mobile broadband, anything like that. These kinds of things tend to work. So first I'm going to cover DNS steel. DNS steel allows you to stealthily extract files from a victim machine or through from a victim network even using DNS requests. And this, as mentioned, is really, really stealthy. So firstly, I'm just going to grab the link to the Git repo so we can clone this onto our server. As we've used many times before, we have a DigitalOcean VPS on the right here. And on the left, we have a local machine. So on the left here, we're just going to start off by Git cloning that URL and it's going to give us a folder called DNS steel. Firstly, we're going to get our IP address. So we've got it here and then we're just going to do Python DNS steel dot pi and then that IP address dash Z dash V. So this is going to boot up now and it's going to give us a couple of options. So it's going to give us copy an individual file or copy an entire folder. So for our case, we're just going to do an individual file. So I'm going to copy this here. And on this machine, I've got all kinds of different files, but all I'm going to move over is, uh, let's move over test SSL.sh because it's quite small. One downside of this, which you're going to see, is it's quite slow because it's breaking it down into these small DNS packets. You can actually change these settings in DNS steel, but we're just going to run them with the defaults first. So I've just copied and pasted that code you see there. And all you have to do is change this to whatever you want to send. So I'm going to go do test SSL.sh and then hit enter. And you can see on the right here, this is going to go crazy because it's going to be cutting that file up into little parts and sending it as DNS requests. And I'm going to let this play in real time because it will take some time and it's only, a, it's quite a small file. So that's now completed. It doesn't take too long, but that file is very small. If we close DNS steel now, uh, it's going to say save and receive bytes to this file here. If we do ls, we've got received. If we do bash received, it'll run. And uh, this is the test SSL script. So if we run it on this side, just so we can make sure it's the same. Yeah, get the exact same output. So now we're going to look at DNS to proxy. Uh, we need to download uh, a few different things for this to work. So we've got a few dependencies and a few other tools that we also need to download. So let's first download uh, DNS to proxy. So that's this is on GitHub. So just git clone and then the URL. So now we also need to get DNS Python. So this is on the internet somewhere, but there will be a, a link to the description in the description. So if we wget and then that URL, we will have that. So we just need to install Python minimal. So if we do apt get install Python minimal. And we also need uh, Python setup tools. And we also need Python, oh wow, Python PCAPI. So now if we 
unzip DNS Python, and I don't think unzip is installed on Ubuntu by default. So if we quickly download that. So now we can unzip. I'm really struggling to type tonight, like badly. Uh, DNS Python. We can cd into the directory. And all we need to do is python setup.py install. And that should be that. So if we go back to our original folder directory, we can go into DNS to proxy. Ooh. I am really struggling to type like bad. Is it direct? Oh. So we just need to change a few uh, config files in here. So if we go to the domains, domains.config, um, and we put the demsec.co.uk and then the IP address of what Dale has supplied us. So demsec.co.uk is the domain that we want to spoof and then it will get redirected to uh, this IP address. So it's the same for both of them. And then we also want to go into uh, nanospoof.config and also do the same thing there. So once we've done that, all we need to do is Apologies for this little intermission, but we had some problems with the recording. Um, at this stage, all you have to do is run Python DNS to proxy.py, and it'll go ahead and run. Uh, the screenshot you see now is us doing an NS lookup to that server and showing that the IP is coming back as the IP we set. Sorry about that. So this next one I covered a few years back, but it has changed quite a bit, and I think it's a lot better now. So of course I'm talking about iodine. Iodine allows you to create DNS tunnels. Um, the latest version actually works more like a VPN. It uses ton tunnel adapters. Um, so you can actually push like all your traffic over a DNS tunnel. So as before, I've already got this set up, but on Debian, Debian based systems, you can just do apt get install iodine. I'm just gonna say I've already got it. Um, and when you install it you get both the server and the client so you can either like it, it, your system can be both but for this example we're going to be using um this digital ocean vps as the server so we're going to do iodine d for the daemon uh or the server uh, dash f capital p and this is where you put a password so in this case we're just going to do test one two three and then you need to make up an internal IP address, which uh, your server and the client don't have in common. Um, it's like they don't already have. So I'm just going to make one up of 192.168.28.1. And then you need to set put in the, do, uh, the domain name that you want to use. There is some configuration you have to do here. So I'll put a screenshot on screen now of what how you need to set up your domain to do this. But now... This is up and running. So on the left here, this is a system that's running on the local network, which I'm just SSH'd into. And this already has the iodine client um, because it's automatically included in Kali, go figure. Uh, and we're almost gonna copy the settings here. But instead of going for the uh, IP address, like the local IP address, we're gonna get the, server ISP, the server's IP this time. And then a tunnel dot I'm in your dot network and then at the end we're just going to put a little ampersand so it'll run in the background so as you can see we've set up successfully we're now transferring data back and forth so we can actually test this by doing ping 192.168.28.1 and that's the IP address of the, uh, the server and as you can see it goes through and that's all happening over DNS queries so the next thing we're going to do is set up an SSH tunnel over the DNS tunnel. So that way we can actually get on the internet via our DNS tunnel.
Now, because we're actually SSH'd into our target machine, we're going to have to set up a um, tunnel in putty. So to do that, I'm going to go remove the one I already have set up. So we're just going to copy the part that we used when SSHing into this remote host, and we're going to go for a local um, port forward, uh, local tunnel, sorry, uh, same port, local host colon 8080, and hit apply. So right here, I have my Firefox open, and here, you can see here, that I've got it, wow, that was a bit redundant. So here you can see I'm using Foxy Proxy, and I'm using my local host and the IP address, which, uh, the port that I just set using Putty and the SSH tunnels. And if we go to my IP.is, you can see we have the IP address of the um, DigitalOcean machine. So all over DNS, we've created an SSH tunnel through the DNS tunnel, and now we're tunneling all our traffic out all over port 53. If you had a captive portal that only allowed traffic out on port 53 or only DNS traffic, this is a perfect way to get a full functioning internet connection just using that. So I hope you enjoyed the rundown of our top three favorite DNS tools for Linux and just in general. And... Yeah, if you want to leave a comment, feel free to do that below. Head over to the forums, hit like, and if you're not already, subscribe. It really helps us out. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. See you later, guys.